welcome to the second lecture in the module on ethics there. In the introductory lecture, we have taken note of the main objectives of uh, the presentation relating to ethics there and the significant outcomes of that particular module. We have also mentioned about you know, the rules for certification and the key takeaways and the certification relating to evaluation. In the introduction to the ethics and particularly engineering ethics, we attempted uh, an understanding of the concepts especially what do you mean by ethics and what do you mean by morality, right? In this module or in this lecture, we will be noting the main theories relating to ethics that eventually came into application into various professions there. The sense of having ethics in a profession was prompted by lot of contributions from intellectuals across the globe. So this module presents you as to what is the need for uh, discussion about ethics there and why we are uh, separating engineering ethics and why theory of ethics, isn't it? First, ethical theories are the principles or rules based on different kinds of approaches. In other words, each of these ethical theories have a different approach to ethics, while some emphasize on rules, some others emphasize on actions there. Perhaps you will get answers to these questions in the due course of this lecture, let us hope. But you must understand that Theory building and knowledge of theories help us in building a framework for a kind of an effective decision making. So you as professionals, budding professionals or emerging professionals, those who are already into this profession, usually encounter various situations. There may be times that you may be expected to differentiate between uh, the right and wrong often or what is the best that can be done in certain given situations or circumstances there. So we can start off with some of the thoughts of Descartes, a French philosopher, mathematician and scientist of the 17th century. It is interesting to quote from his work, Discourse on Method. He observed, I quote, the power of judging well and of distinguishing the true from false, which we properly call good sense or reason, is naturally equal in all men, I unquote. Let me quote again for you to emphasize this particular aspect that uh, this quality of distinguishing false from truth or truth from false or good sense and uh, bad sense. Descartes felt that to say it is in everyone, all of us, it is a built in feature for a human being there. Further let me quote. Descartes, our opinions differ not because of some of us are more reasonable than others, but solely because we take our thoughts along different paths and do not attend to the same things there. So, so the first philosopher, you know, Descartes popular as father of analytical geometry for his contribution algebra and geometry is what you know I just quoted 
and then again I, I must tell you that our opinions differ not because some of us are more reasonable than others but solely because we take our thoughts along different paths and don't attend to the same things there. I mean the profession demands that you know. Uh, although the innate traits in us are maybe more or less same, but we take different paths there. Why do we take different paths? It is a matter of deeper concern for us. And this brings us to an important aspect here, like the genesis of that, how theory building and knowledge of theories, building a framework for effective decision making there. What is good? What is bad? How we distinguish? I mean, technical knowledge generally helps us you know, to know what is laid down as per a particular theory, a particular approach there. But we need to go also by other aspects that govern in this regard there. And the knowledge about a particular area helps in building a framework for effective decision making and that is crucial for us. You know. And we cannot go deeply into the historical aspects at the present juncture. But when we look at how ethics emerged and what are the theories of ethics, then we can understand that ethical theories find their origins in the Western philosophy originating from Europe and Middle East, largely influenced by ancient religious thought. The same is the Indian context when some of us you know, also find important references to ethics like as those represented in Rig Veda and also the concept of dharma in the Indian context which stands for duty, obligation and righteousness. This emphasizes that ethical values are considered the ultimate and everybody is expected to perform their duty accordingly. There are several sources in this. I am only quoting a few for you. These include Upanishads, the Ramayana, the Dharma Shastras, you know, several which can be quoted there. And uh, the origins can be also traced to Vedas. It further emphasizes the ethical values that are considered ultimate and everybody is expected to perform their duty, isn't it? Socrates, Aristotle, Plato, Buddha, Kautilya and many other philosophers took the discussion relating to the ethical conduct forward on ethics through their works, many works and many philosophers included the concept of ethics and morality, opening up a wide array of inputs and insights. When you come to other aspects too, when you know what is good, why do you do bad, is always a question that haunts many of us you know, in many professions there. For example, don't copy in, the, in an examination. This is instilled to you or to all of us right from class 1. A violation of it is seen as unethical conduct on our and then this is punished in different ways there. And this can be extended to any area you know. And theories of ethics, suppose we are now coming to the core classification of ethics and one can find this classification into three, three aspects. First is the meta-ethics, further into moral realism and moral anti-realism, normative ethics, 
divided into three like teleological, deontological and virtue. Finally, the third one is applied ethics there. You know. And the third aspect actually all of us are interested in. These are further divided into many subgroups, you know, and these will focus on normative and applied ethics there, and this can be known through what is called the meta-ethics to start with, the meanings and nature of ethical judgments, divided as moral realism and moral anti-realism. Next is normative ethics, how things should be or ought to be. Things should be or ought to be are important points of our consideration there. I mean, you need to note that to say that what does it mean to certain phenomenon, is it right or wrong? And divided as teleological, deontological and virtue ethics there. Further, when you go for the applied ethics part of it, as the name itself suggests, this applies to ethical theory to real life situations, specifically in professions. In the first lecture, we also referred to a number of accidents that took place in certain years, we noted. When in practice, the violation of ethics is clearly showing a compromise. You need to see how up, up ethics need to be applied to certain specific situations there. Is there a compromise on what is called rules? We are, we are also examining that in a little while later. So, applied ethical theory in real life situations and engineering ethics falls into this particular domain and we can regard it as a, an example there. What do you mean by the second category, the tele teleological? We can see that the first approach under normative ethics is teleological and uh, this is derived from the Greek word teleos, purpose. Goal, logos means science or study. This is also known as what is called consequentialism, which emphasizes on the consequences or outcomes of certain actions there. And it deals with questions how it is going to affect and what are the consequences of a particular action. Who popularized it? When you come to the issues like, you know, who are the contributors to this kind of a thinking there? You will see that, you say, Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill are the two of the proponents of utilitarianism. A philosophical theory under teleological ethics. Ask me as to what do you mean by utilitarianism, then I will say that actions are good that serve to maximize well-being of greatest number. So, whichever action that results in greatest good to the people, that is called utilitarianism. In other words, it is closer to what is called welfareism. So, if you see it, how is it important for engineers? Actions that result in good as far as the maximum number and that brings in greatest welfare. Utilitarianism can be understood as a theory of welfare focusing on maximizing the well-being of not just one individual or group of individuals, but the society as a whole. 
A typical act of utilitarianism emphasizes on actions rather than on rules. Again, individual actions should be based on whether the most good was produced or ensured and rules should be broken if doing good so will lead to the most good. As engineers who design processes and products that affect the lives of many people and their welfare, greatest numbers happiness has to be the primary consideration in the profession. When it comes to teleological ethics there, Utilitarianism is fundamental to many types of engineering analysis, including risk-benefit analysis and cost-benefit analysis. And uh, what are the deontological ethics? These can be seen in different perspectives. These are derived like deontological derivatives from Greek, deon means duty, logos means science or study. This emphasizes on adherence to rules and fulfillment of duties. And it deals with some of the questions like, what is my duty? What I ought to do? What is the right thing to do? Is what a broadly the deontological ethics states here. Why should we be violating any rule? Let us go only by the rule and not any other consideration is one of the aspects there. Actions are judged as ethical or unethical on the basis of duty, the individual's intentions rather than consequences. John Locke and Immanuel Kant are the prominent philosophers of teleological ethics. Locke, an English philosopher, emphasized on rights ethics, no? Locke, like rights ethics, you know. Right, you know, if you are going to ensure rights of the people, that itself is ethical. You know. The English philosopher emphasized on rights ethics, that is, on natural rights of individuals like right to life, liberty and property of humans, popular today as human rights there. If you look at deontological ethics there, from another perspective by Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher during the 18th century, according to him, the rightness or wrongness, you know, the rightness or wrongness of actions doesn't depend on the consequences, but on whether they fulfill the duty, you know, opposite of what we said, utilitarianism. Here we are coming that it depended on the consequences whether they fulfill the duty or not, he believed that it was supreme principle of morality. In other words, obligation is the basis for motivation. Obligation is the basis for motivation. Let us look at, finally, the virtue aspect of it, as you see in this construction of a dam, advantages and disadvantages, if you look at it. What decision would you take? Is there a middle path? Like any construction leads to rehabilitation issues there. What is ethical in this? You know, do you rehabilitate them? Or do you allow submergence in some areas? Frequently these questions are commanding the attention there normative ethics or also known as virtue ethics emphasizes on the inherent character of a person what is called the inherent character of a person rather than on the nature of consequences of actions there nature of consequences of actions why i am telling you is that you see the center of morality is good character of an individual It is undoubtedly an influencing factor of an individual's professional morality there. It may be observed that the virtue ethics may largely constitute what is called personal ethics. 
and it is undoubtedly an influencing factor of an individual's professional morality as I observed earlier too. The above theoretical frameworks provide deeper insights for an understanding of how theories evolved over a period of time. The theories of ethics, one can note, provide a critical framework in solving many problems at workplaces. And the theoretical frameworks also provide deeper insights for effective decision making which may result in greater good to the people there. We are now ending this lecture and we will be moving to the next lecture on applied ethics. Thank you.